Good evening everyone, welcome to another video on the North Downs Way. Hope you're keeping well. Joined by Luke from The Real Traveling Amigos once more. Check me out. Definitely check him out <laughs> and subscribe. He's filming all the North Downs Way as well as I'm doing it. We are back in Y this evening. But why? But why? <laughs> because that is the start of part 10 of the North Downs Way. It's 11.2 miles. We're doing Y to Etching Hill with a wild camp at Y Crown, the big chalk crown memorial that's on top of the hill on the outskirts of the village. I have wild camped up there before with Candice, Matt and Mark. I'll try and put a link to the video somewhere here. We've got this amazing view sort of behind us from the, the church here in Y. So I have got my Terran over laser competition one tent out with me again because it's nice and light. I wanted a tent up on the crown because it can get a bit windy and a bit chilly, but I didn't want to carry too much weight because most of that weight is probably going to be alcohol and water again, as usual. Luke, what shelter have you got? Uh, I come with my Van Gogh Soul 100 again, trusty little lightweight uh, tent, it weighs just over a kilo, I think, so it's not bad, yeah. Uh, I thought it might be might get a bit windy out there, so tent tent's probably wise. Tonight. Yeah, that's what we we thought we'd go with anyway. So we're gonna get a move on. So enough talking, and let's get walking. Y College was founded in 1447 by John Kemp as a training centre for the priesthood. In 1894 it became an agricultural college and four years later was absorbed into the University of London as an adjunct of Imperial College. Y College was closed in 2009 and at the time of writing most of its older buildings were unused but the most modern one is now Y School. This building was opened in 1996 as the Kemp Centre to serve as the College Library. It was named after John Kemp, 1380 to 1454, who was born at nearby Olenty, became Archbishop of York in 1426, a Cardinal in 1439 and finally Archbishop of Canterbury in 1452. North Downs Wayfarers had it easy on the last section, but that is about to change. Some of the most outstanding views of the North Downs Way fall in this section, but we will have to work hard to reach them. A long steep ascent takes us to Y Crown, where the route was formally launched in 1978.
we're all set up we've had dinner i had that adventure foods vegetable hot pot with basically potatoes like mashed potatoes with soy and vegetables and i had that tin of fray bentos chicken meatballs in tomato sauce so i just chucked half of those in with it and that was amazing uh yeah thatcher's haze i'm about halfway through that i've got i've got a local cider to show you later on another bit of homemade cake from the old dot she's in wales at the moment with my aunt i decided not to go it's nice to have a break from your family every now and then <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yeah, this cake is it's absolutely destroyed because I've squashed it a bit and it is like a chocolate cake with, I don't know if it's butterscotch icing or like the, the icing you get on top of a carrot cake, something like that. And then it's got like little sweet jazzy things on top. <laughs> um, oh, that's awful lighting. Ready for second lighting? Go on then. Ping. That's not really done a hell of a lot, but there we go. Look, that's the chocolate, and then the the icing, look, is just falling off there. So it's just like one big slab. It's the end of it. I think there's a couple of people sat on a bench behind us. Cheers. Um, so we're, we're not completely alone, and there was a couple of people. You are not uh, alone. No, don't, no seeing copyright. <laughs> I'm not having Michael Jackson's estate like getting involved anyway um yeah there was like so there was a couple of girls up here and then what was it you said they were taking <laughs> photos of each other on i just said do you, want, the... do you want me to take a photo of both of you together no no you didn't know you went do you want to f no what'd you say do, do you want a photo of of I both of you trying to be kind yeah and i think it came across wrong and they <laughs> ran off <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically right okay so right start again so they were taking photos of each other like with the the view behind and luke when do you want do you want a photo of both of you or something and they were like oh no you you definitely don't want a photo of, of both of us we're not looking we're not looking our best at the moment and sort of laughed about it <laughs> And then walked off and i was gonna say no i think he meant do you want to do you want him to take a photo of you together I, I don't know how they got that wrong whether they thought we were trying to make a pass at them or something i was like whatever it, it was anyway but ladies we're both taken so we're both spoken for yeah so right you're having that bit because it's got to... <laughs> just manhandle it. what i'll just manhandle it well you it's your fault i thought you Oh, no. yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Anyway, Luke's Idiot. tired. He was out drinking last night. I think I had seven too many. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, let's try the go. cake. Oh. Stop it. It's dried out a bit. Oh, no, mine's really moist. It's good, isn't it? Proper moist. <laughs> God. I apologise for any women watching this. Oh. Yeah, that's delicious. Top credit to Tom's mum. She makes, I don't know, just amazing cakes, honestly. Um, one thing to do him, rather than spending money on camping dessert meals, I'm just going to see if she'll make me different cakes. So if you want to see more cakes from Tom Outdoor's mum, get in the comments and say, we want to see more homemade cakes from Tom Outdoor's mum. There you go. And then we'll make our, make our own YouTube channel. I said that. <laughs> I said, do you want to be filmed like making some cakes? She went, no, I fucking don't. And that, I was like, right, <laughs> fair enough. So, yeah, that went down like a, a lead balloon. Oh. This is really nice. This might be better than the lemon drizzle. I'm not sure. So, yeah, that's the cake done anyway. Um, we're going to contemplate that for a while. And then I'll show you the cider. As I said, it's a, a local cider. This is Duda's Tun, I think you pronounce it. Not Duda's Tun, it's Duda's Tun. And they're a Kent cider company, so it's Kent to the core. And this one is salted caramel still cider. 
a perfect marriage of fresh apples and caramel with just a hint of salt and it's four percent i picked this up in the little co-op in y at the bottom of the hill so it's about as local as you can get at duda's ton we pride ourselves on pressing our own apples grown at pine trees farm always fermenting from 100 percent freshly pressed juice whilst using wild yeasts to produce cider true to our unique region in the heart of Kent. Duda is believed to have been an 11th century person who set up a farmstead or tun, which over hundreds of years became a village known today as Doddington. So this salted caramel flavour is part of the fusion range, tasty ciders with attitude. Our exciting Frisian range represents our own unique take on producing ciders with a modern twist. Traditional ciders at heart are blended with specially selected ingredients to create super tasty fusions. So it says the appearance of this cider is a clear light amber. The smell should be sweet caramel. Cheers everyone for watching so far and subscribing. Oh, yeah, it's a sweet caramel smell to it. And the taste, it says, not too sweet, caramel with crisp apple finish. Interesting, here we go. Oh, well, that's different. That is very different. Yeah, there's a hint of salt in it, but it's a very, very strong caramel taste. I wouldn't want to drink a lot of those. That'd get really sickly if you had too many of them and there's a a faint kind of apple finish to it it says crisp apple i'm not sure about that but it's definitely a mild apple taste but the caramel is very overpowering um it almost tastes kind of medicinal like a, a cough syrup but sort of not as thick a texture to it for it being different straight away i'd give it at least a seven out of ten I think I could probably give that an 8.1 it is good it's very good I think maybe if it was slightly slightly fizzy it might actually taste a little bit better but I can't really think what else it it reminds me of I suppose like a, a brother's toffee apple cider that's the closest thing I can think of. I know caramel and toffee are completely different but no, I've always thought they're quite similar. It's not bad, yeah. 8.1, I'll give that. Duda's ton salted caramel cider. Thought, as we're in Kent, let's drink a cider from Kent. Anyways, I'm going to finish that off in a minute. It's different, very different, that. I'm looking forward to trying a few more Duda's ton ciders. I've had, I've had a couple before, like when me and Candice have been out on dates and stuff in sort of pubs in the in the Kent area we are planning to get up for about 7 a.m i believe the wind's picking up just a little bit now but should be fine in the tents anyways better get some sleep so enough yawning and i'll see you in the morning night all Y Crown is a special place for the North Downs Way, as this is where the route was officially opened on the 30th of September 1978 by the then Archbishop of Canterbury, Donald Coggan. And what a spot! There have been grand views of plenty along the route so far, but this one takes some beating. Extending on a clear day, 
far across the Weald of Kent and out to sea, with Dungeness Power Station visible at the tip of Romney Marsh, some 20 miles away. This is clearly the place to install commemorative structures, as there are no fewer than six. In ascending order, they are Y Crown itself, cut into the chalk by students of Y College in 1902 to mark the coronation of Edward VII. Y Crown Millennium Stone, flurry Y, let Y flourish. A long distance topograph, a compass rose, a wall commemorating the centenary of Y Crown and the golden jubilee of Elizabeth II. And to top them all, a North Downs Way milestone, which also serves to commemorate Warwick Rance, a local man who loved walking in this area and died in 2000 at the tragically early age of 34. So this North Downs Way marker stone is a little bit different here at Y Crown. This one is in memory of Warwick Rance, 1966 to 2000, who loved walking these downs. And it says Farnham is 101 miles back the way I've come. Canterbury is 21 miles from here. And Dover is also 21 miles from here. Morning all. Morning. It is about half seven, just gone half seven. Uh, I've been up since 6.30, Luke's been up about 7-ish. Seven 7-ish. <clears throat> it's really, really good weather. This is probably the best weekend we could have picked to do this section because the last time I was up here, it was ridiculously windy and there was some, some rain and stuff. And now it's just so calm. I've not got the microphone in. It's like there's just no wind at all. The bushes, are, the grass is not even moving. Nah, literally nothing. It's, it's really warm. You know, the sun's come up now fully and it's, yeah, it's going to be quite a warm day, I think. Uh, so we can see for, you know, for miles and miles, we can see that, like, Hastings is over in that direction. Now, I'm using a topograph here. Uh, Winchester is sort of over that way. And then Oxford is to the to the right of that. And then behind the camera, we've got Dover over that way and Canterbury's <coughs> over that way. Anyways, let's get the tents taken down. Let's get some food on the go. wind's picked up a little bit it's got a little bit chillier we sat on that little bench just above the Y Crown Memorial got some apple and blueberry Tesco porridge and two sachets of coffee two creamers two sugars so a double coffee in my big mug that I melted Luke's had Sausages and beans, was it? Yep. On a hot chocolate at the moment. Warm the bones, got a bit chilly out here. So. It, yeah, it has. It has got really cold suddenly. The sun's gone in. Um, like, it was so nice at like seven, half seven this morning, and then it's just completely changed. And it, it, it looks like it's threatening to rain, but hopefully it doesn't. We'll crack on with breakfast. This is quite nice, by the way, actually. And uh, got some food for later on as well, because we're probably going to stop at some point on our on our walk. The walking is then fairly level, taking us past the dramatic cleft known as the Devil's Kneading Trough. But there are a couple of dips down to Stoting and Staple Farm. Another long hill leads up to Farthing Common and the Coombe near Postling which should be one of the prettiest parts of the route. What a shame that a power line and pylons have been thrust across it. But a stiff climb out is rewarded with a bird's eye view of the picture postcard village of Postling.
Devil's Kneading Trough is the deepest and most spectacular of the many dry combs in this area. The sides are so steep that you can imagine a giant ship coming in to dry dock. sat in the back beer garden of the Five Bells here at Braben and it was well worth the detour. They do Duda's Ton Kent Ciders here. This one's an elderflower. I've not had that before so let's give it a little try. That's refreshing, that is really really nice. And Luke has got pickled egg pale ale. A pickled egg pale ale. I've not heard that one before. They've got some yeah, quite unique stuff here. Um, we're going to see what the food's like and get some grub as well. I've just kicked my shoes and socks off. And honestly, I'm a man that's at peace with the world right now. My feet feel fantastic. So we're going to stay here for a little while, chill out. We're going to refill the water bottles, get rid of our rubbish probably make use of their toilet facilities <laughs> and uh, yeah looking forward to it so cheers everyone all right people we have left the five bells sorry we've left the five bells um bit disappointing we walked in there Luke grabbed a menu and the girl there was like have you booked and we went no we haven't she went we're fully booked we can't do food and he went we're walking the north downs way we literally just even something small like a sandwich or something no can do so he was like even ah. it was like all the, all the tables were empty yeah exactly i kind of think they looked at us and thought a couple of vag toe rags. yeah vagrants and stuff it's the flat cap mate that flat cap is like it's a symbol of hatred in these parts anyway unless you're in yorkshire unless you're in yorkshire but we're not we're a long way from yorkshire anyway so we've got a drink instead as you saw um kind of just recharged our batteries really and then i've got rid of the rubbish they kindly let me get rid of all of that including my old camping mat so the uh the uh, blue all you avid watchers out there that blue you want it it's in the bin at the five bells in Braben yeah go and get it now it's got gorilla tape on it as well anyway got rid of that so that's a lot less weight refilled some water bottles so I've now got a litre and a half of water quids in got about five miles to go so that should get us there and do a bit of grub and then I went oh, I'll get I'll I'll pay for these drinks so the other girl at the bar was like well 
um, did you order any food? I went, no, we didn't, because apparently you were fully booked and we couldn't get anything. And she sort of gave me this quiet look like, wouldn't have mattered, we'd have done you something. And I just thought, brilliant. So, it's because I didn't have a flat cap on, you see. Uh, this isn't actually North Downs Way, but it runs parallel with it. We're, we're cheating a little bit because we had to backtrack on the last section to find that camp spot. We've added a lot more sort of, we had a lot more distance on, so we're sort of allowing ourselves just to walk along this like level little country lane and then the North Downs Way rejoins it a little bit further along, so we're not missing out on much anyway, honest. So we found a little bench right in the back of the graveyard here at St Mary's Parish Church in Brabourne, Brabourne. And we're going to do some, some lunch now that we've got some water we can cook with. So I've got another grenade uh, protein bar. That one's Caramel Chaos. Luke's got a mug shot. Creamy cheese, that's a good one, that. Yeah. Got one of my little cheap yeah. high five banana energy bars again. It's literally like a couple of, well, probably about a mouthful. And then the main thing was my second breakfast, an Adventure Foods Nusper Muesli. That's how you pronounce it. So it's crunchy muesli with milk and fruit basically uh, and yeah it just takes cold water so I'm gonna have that I thought that'll keep me going cut down some weight yeah really peaceful there very very quiet slight breeze and we're out of out of the sun in the shade which is nice so we're gonna get eating and then we'll we'll crack on and rejoin the North Downs way further up I think Highfield Farm I think it was called yes. we've looked on the map and yeah links up with that and then we've worked out it's roughly five miles from here to Etching Hill the end of this section see the sea now that is going to be kind of like our view for the final section of this of the mainline route and I cannot wait for that section it's going to be absolutely brilliant I love coastal walks and this is going to have like more history than you can shake a medieval spear at so there's there's just going to be some really cool stuff on that I cannot wait to do that and I reckon some of the locations for where we could wild camp are just going to be epic so that would be Etching Hill to Dover and I think it's about 12 miles or something something like that so anyways enough talking let's get walking
Postling is a charming little village of timber framed houses with a population of just under 200. The unusually dedicated Church of St Mary and St Radigand dates from Saxon times and has wall paintings thought to date from the 12th century. Pent Farm on the west side of the village was the home in turn of the poet Christina Rossetti, the artist Walter Crane and the writer Joseph Conrad. Tolsford Hill Radio Station was opened in 1957, originally as the British terminal for Eurovision and to handle telephone calls between Britain and France. Standing 230 feet or 70 metres high and made of reinforced concrete, it now handles mobile phone traffic. Right, we're outside the huge radio mast tower thing at Etching Hill which is actually just on the outskirts Etching Hill is down that road behind me where Luke is and the North Downs Way carries on over there and that's where we're going to be starting the final section of the mainline route Etching Hill to Dover via Folkestone so Luke's car is down that way so we're going to leave the North Downs way at this point and we'll return to it for the final instalment and Luke's thinking probably get away with parking his car just outside here or parking a car here anyway and then we can just boom head off on the on the last section and do that I think and um, yeah that's pretty tiring that's been a tough old section that a lot of up and down isn't it? A lot of up and down, yeah, definitely. They did say that in the guidebook that this section was going to be a lot tougher and that we'd had it easy on the on the previous section, the Lenham to Y, which it was a lot easier, let's be fair. And it was it was quite pleasant. It's gone six o'clock now. Is it? It must be like nearer six thirty or something. Quarter past six, yes, yeah, so it's getting on a little bit. Anyways, so we're gonna head now back to the Gatekeeper Inn pub in Etching Hill where Luke's parked his car, I'll probably get a drink. Etching Hill is a small village with a population of about 750. Its name derives from the Saxon Tettingheld, meaning the slope of Tetter's people. So we're in the beer garden of the Gatekeeper Inn in Etching Hill. And that is the end of part 10 of the North Downs Way. We've just got part 11, Etching Hill to Dover, to go. And then we're going to go back to Bolton Lees once we've finished the mainline route. And we're going to do the Canterbury loop. So that's Bolton Lees to Dover via Canterbury. And we'll have a look in Canterbury Cathedral and you know, around the historic city and stuff like that. Anyway, that's for another time. So that's the end of this section, end of this video. It's been really good. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Half a Coke each. <laughs> Both driving. Yeah. Tonight. Nothing uh, nothing too rock and roll. Hmm. It's been a it's been a tough section that. But it's been well worth it for the views. Definitely. Y Crown. That was an amazing camp up there. That was that was pretty special. Until next time, take care of yourselves look after each other, stay safe, see you again soon. Toodaloo. Bye. Adios. <laughs> Adios, buenas noches. Buenas noches. <laughs>
anyways, let's get the tents taken down and let's get some food on the go. <laughs> Don't fucking laugh, you prick. This is all making the outtakes. <laughs> Unsubscribe from him. Oi! Right. Oi! Oi, oi, oi! None of that. Right. We'll be having words, son, if you do that. Right. <laughs>